morning. How are we doing? Oh, good to see so many faces. I wasn't feeling this shiny about 10 minutes ago, as there were panic text messages to Phil and Hannah going, can't get my computer to work. But we're here, team. We're here. Welcome to the July uh, SOF pod. Let's have a quick look around the room. Welcome lots of familiar faces, some people I haven't seen on here for a while. Uh, and whose first time is it? Who's poked their nose in to have a check it all out? Hey, Basha. Hey, Helen. Hey, Charlie. Hey, Sanjan. Oh, me as well. Oh, hello, me as well. Hello, Richard. <laughs> another one. Uh, <laughs> so, and Ali, how are you? So Good. the way we start all the SOF pods is with a poem and then silence. Um, and the reason for that is a way to bring everyone together into the same space at the same time. So this is your invitation right now to just pause, sit back, close your eyes if you want to, look out the window, we're just going to take the next couple of minutes for you to arrive, to settle and to connect with everybody who is in this room with us virtually around the world. So this is a poem from Donna Ashworth and it's called Check Your Vibes. Do not dull your light to match another's. Do not dim your frequency to fit a muted room. Do not lower your vibration for fear of standing out and do not ever try to lower someone else's. Do not allow shouting voices to drown your instinct and do not silence your instinct when she's screaming at you to hear. Vibes are not woo-boo, my friends. They are the energy that runs this mystical rock that we inhabit and they control everything. Check your vibes, never dim. It's the new chin up. So we're gonna take the next 90 seconds in silence. So just close your eyes, take some intentional breaths and we'll meet back here in a moment. As you come back into the room, take a really deep breath in through your nose, out through your mouth. You need a stretch, have a stretch and a wiggle. <sighs> anyway, welcome to the July pod. I mean, I think it's July. I am in the UK. I am seriously debating if it's July. For those of you who are lucky enough to be out of the UK and maybe in a southern European country where you've got sunshine, enjoy the heat. Is anyone who's out of the UK today? We've got a few people in other countries. Feel free to drop in the chat where you are. It'd be really uh, good to know that there are at least some people out there enjoying some sunshine that we are not. Uh, how how is the month going for you all it's very early on I've already had an intense three days uh, doing delivery and I haven't done three days of delivery back to back for a very long time and literally I woke up this morning going how did I used to do this week in week out I, I think there's an age thing going on here that uh or I'm out of practice one of the two because three days used to just be something that was just super easy to do but I have to say knackered today 
Uh, I don't know if anyone else ever gets that experience. <clears throat> Today, though, we are joined by Hannah. Now, Hannah and I, Hannah and I go way, way back. Uh, we were very, very lucky to work together at Diageo. And then our paths crossed again in the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. I think that's yeah, what happened. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Hannah has... Uh, I've always been the cr more creative than I have, and I always remember her being in innovation at Diageo and marketing. So I just held that in my head that she was super creative. But she is people. She is. And today, Han's going to talk to us um, about our facilitation style using a <laughs> tool and method that she has designed. So Han, do you want to introduce yourself um, yes. to the team, to everyone who's Absolutely. here today? Absolutely. I, I I see lots of familiar faces, but also some new ones. So. Um, but remember, Kirsty, it's not you don't ask how creative are you? You oh. have to ask how are you creative? So, you know, I'm not sure that I'm more creative than you, but I certainly know that we are creative in different ways. And that's what I am so excited to be talking to you about this morning and get you to experience together uh, with me and Kirsty. Uh, yeah, so we know each other from Giaggio. So before I joined Diageo in 2000. I uh, I worked in uh, I worked for United Biscuits in marketing, um, and uh, and in innovation. I am Danish originally, and you are joining me in my native Denmark. I cannot say that it's warm. I'm sitting here being freezing cold. Uh, usually, I live in Barcelona, so I'm the, one of the ones that go, "Yeah, it's sunny. Isn't that great?" Um, but my adult life, I've lived in the UK, in the US, and also in Ireland. So when I worked in Ireland, I worked for Kellogg. I was head of innovation for Kellogg for Europe. And then I left the corporate world in 2007 and set up my own. Um, I run a consultancy called Flexible Brains. Uh, but for the last uh, few years, I've dedicated most of my time to building what we're going to talk about today, uh, which is Creative ID, which is a profiling tool that helps you understand not if you are creative, but how you are creative. Um, and yeah, I'm excited to be with you today. And why creativity? So I have been speaking to Kirsty quite a few times about, oh, we should do something together. What can we do together? Because uh, I love Kirsty. It's all about people uh, in my book. Uh, people matter more than anything else. Um, and creativity and facilitation to me has a, a real important connection because essentially what we do as facilitators um, is that we take people on journeys. We get them from where they are today for where they would like to be in the future. And we take them on journeys. And in order to take them on journeys, we need to create. We need to develop something that wasn't already there. And sometimes we copy and paste because we take techniques that we know has worked in the past. And, but we always have to give them a twist because we all know that our clients are always different. And even if it's a similar project, um, the people that we're working with are different as well. So in, in the work that we do, there is very little copy and pasting. And therefore, we need to think differently. We need to imagine. We need to be curious. We need to visualize what journey it is we take them on. And those elements, what ties all those elements together, is essentially creativity. So why do I dedicate my life to creativity? Uh, because one of the reasons was that when I worked in the corporate world and also working with clients, I got very frustrated at times, but also really fascinated by the fact that we to in business, we need to grow. That's a premise. Uh, but we also need to transform. We can't just grow in a linear way, but we also need to transform. Yet when we walk through the corporate doors, it often feels like a creative desert. We believe that creativity belongs to the world of arts, or even if we feel creative at the weekend, we tend to leave our creative brains in the corporate car park as we walk through the doors. So really my mission is to inject creative intelligence into the world of work so that the world of work becomes more human, more agile, and more inclusive. And since 2008, I've been collaborating with the University of Sheffield to help you understand how we are creative, not if we are creative, but how we are creative. So that's what I've been dedicating my time to. Um, and um, that's what we're going to go through today. 
Does that sound good? Yeah, brilliant. And I love in, in Denmark, we, we talk about uh, if, if we have a, a creative limitation, we call it a bean spin. A bean spin is when you put the leg out and somebody trips over it. That's a bean spin. But you hear this a lot um, when people talk, oh, what bean spin should we give each other uh, in order for, to force ourselves to think differently, right? So what hurdle do we want to put in our way? And one of the hurdles that I love that Kirsty has is that there's no PowerPoint. So for those of you who know me and have been to any of the sessions that we run in Creative ID, you will know that I love PowerPoints and I spend a lot of time finessing them. So my hurdle today is no PowerPoints, which, you know, is always good because it keeps me on my toes as well, quite literally. Um, so what are we going to do? Let's talk about creativity in the, in the first instance. So we've been spending the last 15 years understanding in the world of work um, how are we creative? And what we have identified, what we have developed is essentially a psychometric tool, right? Our psychometric tool looks like this. And most of you know psychometric tools like Insights or uh, MBTI or Discovery, and there's a million of them. And how our tool is a little bit different is that we focus specifically on preferences, not personality, not strength or not ability. We focus on preferences. What we believe is that everybody is creative, but in different ways, and we have different ways of being creative, right? And so our, our tool basically measures your preferences and everybody gets 20 dots across these five styles. So I'm gonna put this to one side because this is not important today. What is important today is the five styles. So real quick, what is creativity really in the world of work? And that's what these five styles uh, uh, basically define on an end-to-end, -end more holistic way than what we usually think, which might be about brainstorming or the ability to draw. What we look at it is holistically, what is creativity really in the world of work from end to end? And uh, we have identified these five styles. I'll go through them real quick. And then what we will do is we will look at it through the lens of facilitation, because that's what we're here to do, right? So the five styles we've identified through the research we've done is first and foremost, we have stimulating because that is really how people think about creativity. It's a popcorn brain, the idea generator, the disruptor. People who break the rules and are revolutionary. We also have spotting. Spotting is about connecting the dots, seeing patterns and principles, synthesizing information, into the most salient points and also seeing potential, sensing potential in early stage ideas, that's spotting. Then we have sculpting. Sculpting is about taking the abstract and making it concrete. It's about moving ideas forward, either through prototyping, through storytelling. And as you do so, you also need to problem solve and overcoming the hurdles that you hadn't necessarily predicted. That's the third style. And I'm sure that you are seeing yourself in some of these. And at the very end, you will also have a download. So of course, take notes, but you will also have um, a download at the end. The fourth style is selecting. Selecting is about understanding the context we're operating in, about defining the direction, but also making choices. Once you have fully formed ideas and options available to you, you make choices. Because what's important is what we do as much as what we don't do. And therefore, it's also about prioritizing. And then last but not least, we have supporting. So selecting is about the end destination. Supporting is about the journey, about getting us to a better place in a better way and using the people available to us in order to think differently um, and act differently as well. So this is about empathy and about empowering. These are the five styles that we have identified. And every single one of us have a preference for one or more of these styles. This is not about labeling, right? So don't label yourself, but use it as a language and a lens with which you can think about yourselves slightly differently. Does that make sense as a context setter? Yeah. And I can see some also, Emma, if you want to jump in and say, Hannah, you forgot this. It's really important. Then just jump in, right? So feel free to do that. And also, Kirsty, if anybody has any questions, please answer throughout. Yeah, and also um, 
those of you who are here regularly know to use the chat. So always drop things in chat, or if you want to put your voice in the room, you are so, so welcome. Exactly, exactly, absolutely. So these are the five, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take you through the five again, and I'm going to do it a little bit more slowly, and we're going to look at it through the lens of facilitation. What does this look like when you uh, design and deliver the work that you do? And as I take you through them, have a little think about which of the which two, so think about two, which two of the five resonate most with you when you facilitate. Okay, so let's start with stimulating. So when we think about stimulating in the context of facilitation, this is really about having a very inspirational facilitation style. Stimulators, they have so many things they can pull on and they throw lots of balls into the room. They infuse people and they open new corridors. They walk through new doors to get to new places. They really help people think bigger and broader and sort of raise their eyes above the parapet so they can see lots and lots of possibilities. They might not land things always, but they definitely infuse people. So they go, wow, this was a really good session. I feel filled up with new inspiration, with insights and with power. This is really the energy giver in the room. That is stimulating. So when you design a stimulating, you might find it hard to make choices. You want to cram everything in and you might sometimes have an issue with timing that you need to get the timing right. But you are definitely not lacking sparkle and, you know, you are just full of ideas as you design. Spotting. Spotting might have a slightly more quiet facilitation style. It might be around sort of starting people off and then listening in, hearing what people say, it's more perceptive. It is uh, quite intuitive. So spotters, they really have a knack for uh, navigating some of the abstract things that are going on in the room. And they are comfortable with ambiguity because when we facilitate, it isn't always obvious where we are going and why we're going there. So they're comfortable with following a thread that might be interesting, not knowing where it might take you. And then also just going back to things they might have heard previously and connecting the dots and seeing the patterns emerge as you go through. So it's a potentially a more quiet facilitation style where you just nudge people in slightly different directions and then you step back and you observe and then at the right moment, you go in and go, hmm, what I heard over here was, and I am wondering if. So this is more of the spotting facilitation style. And you have all of this in the download as, as well. But listen out right now for which two of these five might you might resonate most with you. Hannah, before you go on, in terms of spotting, how would you describe their design style? You touched on that for the stimulator. What would their design, some just in clues? So in terms of designing, um, yeah, the I think they really, they are really good at sort of this, uh, they, they, they have this intuitive knack for envisioning the outcomes in broad terms. And also um, really... Uh, like to bring in learnings and stimuli from parallel worlds because you know we often know that ah you know i know the topic is potentially let's say a, 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 a new medication for something or dog food or whatever it might be that you're doing um but obviously there is parallel learnings from somewhere else and you bring that stimuli in as well so you see the connections yeah okay and Kirsty, just shout out because I'm not keeping an eye on the chat, okay? So sculpting. So sculpting, um, those of you with a facilitation style of sculpting potentially are more structured. You probably guide people sort of logically step to step and take them on a journey to get them from A to B. 
uh, you brief really clearly and you might use metaphors and analogies as well to get people to see what you see and make sure that they're all on the same page. And when you design, you imagine the journey really clearly and you're also taking into account the energy. So where, where is the energy in the room potentially going to be? Unlike stimulators, you might also be better at cutting things out. Um, but not necessarily. So this is about taking people on a journey and making sure that that journey is logical so that you, you meet them where they're at and then bring them where you'd like them to be. Okay. Remember, none of these are better or worse than others. These are just things that show up in us. Okay. They might be fit for purpose, more or less, but this is a combination of different things as well. Right. The child, the child in me so wants to go. That's not true. Ah! We know the stimulator <laughs> is the winner here. That's because that's my, true. that's my strong. Well, point. You, you, you actually, you, the point is, you actually need all five. At different I, know, I know, I know. <laughs> I'm being childish. Sorry. The child in you, the child in you comes out. Right now, the child in you might not come out because selecting, selecting the facilitation style is more results focused. You're really keeping an eye on the end destination and how you can get there uh, with a minimum effort uh, within the faster time. So how so basically keeping the the effort versus reward equation front of center of what you're doing. So you know where you want to go, but how can we get there with minimum effort and fast and efficiently? So you really keep that in mind when you um, design, but you also keep it in mind when you deliver. I think this is really important because in the world today, I don't know when you started facilitating, when I started facilitating, clients would be happy to have a two day workshop. Now they want to achieve everything in two hours, right? So how can you actually get there in, in this perspective? And that's really, really important. Of course, the watch out is that sometimes when we facilitate, you know, in spotter style, you might just kind of follow the thread and see where it takes you. And you might miss that if you're too much in selecting as you uh, facilitate. You need to keep an eye on maybe going off piste as well at times and not becoming too uh, tunnel focused. You will see that each of the styles also have sort of an upside and a downside. So in your, in your download, you will have a, a, a beware for each of them as well. Okay. And then last but not least, listen out for which two of these are most like you because there's a poll coming up in a second, is supporting. Supporting is a really people-centric facilitation style. And it's probably more the archetypical uh, facilitator because we are here to meet people where they're at and we're here to moderate discussions often and making sure that everybody is heard. So often um, when, when I was sort of saying that, that spotting is probably more of a perceptive uh, facilitation style and stimulating is more of an inspirational energy driver, then supporting is more of a moderating style, that you moderate the discussion, maybe more than facilitate the discussion. And that's obviously, you know, two sides of the same coin, but the people are in focus and making sure that all the voices are heard. And that's also really important if we want to think differently, is that we need diversity in the room. Okay, any questions in the chat, Kirsty, we should have a look at before we launch the poll. Because now we're going to ask you, which no. two of these styles might you be? What resonates? Uh, no questions at this time, but let's just put up the poll and just see uh, what people are noticing for themselves in the room. So the poll is going up. It's a multiple choice. So you'll see the five styles there. And we'd love it if you could choose two Choose the two that resonate most. And if you're finding that hard, sometimes it's good to go, what am I not? <laughs> so that helps you delete one, maybe two. Ah, I love <laughs> this bit. I can see the scores starting to come in. I know. Interesting. It's not also fair because I might have done a, I might not have done them all equal, right? But also when you read the download at the very end. Okay. You might, you might readjust your perspective, but that's totally fine. This is a dipstick. We love dipsticks. <laughs> okay, we've got 37 out of the 44, 38, 39, 40. 
You and I are 42. Who's not voted? 41. Final one. 42. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No. Uh, <laughs> Hannah, if you had to pick the two for this room, what do you think the top two might be? Well, I would say... On that, average. Uh, I mean, without seeing the, the poll, yeah. I would say stimulating and supporting because obviously people come to SOF because you are curious about learning things and you're curious about... Um, other people as well so I yeah. think those are the two styles so I'm not I'm not surprised here yeah. we go and there you go so 60 percent um of the group chose uh oh simulating as I've written this morning I do apologize you are stimulating not <laughs> simulating uh 52 percent are supporting uh 38 percent sculpting uh, 31% spotting and 21% selecting. Amazing. I don't, don't think there's any surprises. Absolutely. There. So we're going to silence Kirsty's Ch child and say, oh, no, they're not all whatever, but because they are actually really important. And I think often we need to flex our style as well, depending on the client we're working with and the, and the project we're working on. But what obviously is important is we have the self-awareness of where what am I what what is my if all things are equal where do I gravitate towards yeah what do I really enjoy what gives me energy and where do I like to play and that's essentially what we're talking about here about our facilitation style preferences so let's just talk a little bit about each of them I think again but let's talk about here's some voices in the room and let's start with the one that most of you chose which is simulating or stimulating. <laughs> so stimulating. I would love to hear some voices in the room for those of you who chose that. And I think it's a little bit unfair, but you probably know this already. Um, is how does this show up for you when you either design or deliver your sessions? Just a couple of voices in the room on that. Who wants to put that voice? You can just put your hand up or you can just come off mute. Stimulating is your inspirational, yeah. Emma, Emma Price. Hi. What does um, that look I, like find, I find it really hard to make a decision. So I think all the ideas are brilliant. I think that there's so many different ways we could do it and I get so excited about them all that I find it really sort of hard to pull it back and, and define which ones would be the most uh, efficient or sensible to use or would have the biggest impact and so I just think all of them want to go into the training yeah. or the facilitation that I'm delivering yeah and what do you do in that case then do you have somebody to lean on who can help you kind of either yeah. be the sculptor or selector for you yeah so in our team actually I was, as we were going through it there's five of us including our manager in our team and I think we pretty much cover all of them which is really good because we're really diverse and so it means right. that the selector in the room will really help go, hang on a minute, what are you doing? You're going a bit off piece there. Pull it back. Let's just yeah. look at this. Absolutely. Gives me a bit more of a realistic yeah. look on things. Yeah, absolutely. And how does that make you feel when they do that? Uh, to start with them a bit, a little bit like what you're saying about my ideas. Why are you <laughs> taking away from me? Yeah. Um, but then after that, I'm like, okay, yeah, I see what you're saying. I yeah, get it. Okay. Absolutely. Beautiful. Beautiful. I love that. We talk about creative intelligence uh, in our team rather than creativity. And this is exactly the level of creative intelligence that we love to hear is that level of self self-awareness, how you can use others and then feel good about it. Right. Rather than kind of start putting up the spikes of, of defense, if you like. Yeah. Ultimately, Beautiful. we all want the same thing, don't we? So yeah, exactly. So I I think that was a great description. Thanks, Emma. Uh, let's go to the second one you chose and see how that shows up. And of course, for those who are not speaking, you can also put things in the chat. We love we love the chat. So it's this is what that, that ranked number two in across this group, which was supporting. This is the people centric facilitation style. How does that show up when you either design or deliver? Uh, how do you know this is you? Anybody? Yes. I think there's just like this apprehension. Yeah, come on. Uh, Sophie, hi, how are you? Hi, um, fabulous session, thank you. Um, so supporting, so um, for me, I think it, it's just, again, because you are dealing with humans in the room, 
Mm -hmm. um, and so I think it's really important to to um, really bring in everybody in that room. So, yeah, so I do make a point of if I notice the reflectors, the thinkers is to ask um, is to ask them questions, direct questions to them. Yeah. Um, and I think that also sometimes helps. Uh, and I think a lot of it does depend on the size of the group as well. Yeah. What the topic is. So and again, sometimes if I've had a briefing, if it's a team building or something, if I had a briefing from uh the department head or whatever then absolutely i will kind of keep that at the back of my mind and try and bring people in so that everybody does have that opportunity to speak and share their thoughts it's a good in, it's a good point about the size of the group can you just talk a little bit more about that that's really interesting uh yeah so i'm thinking about uh, uh, some sessions i've been doing recently so for a senior leadership team who were basically broken before mm -hmm. chris they had a new leader brought in a year ago some stuff came out from the employment engagement survey before Christmas and the, the fallout was not great. Mm -hmm. um, and it was part of a much bigger piece around the organization's diversity and inclusion. Um, and so I specifically work with the team. So again, I had access to engage, employee engagement data, conversations from the leader of the team. I interviewed everybody beforehand to make sure that again, I had three hours of these senior leaders in this organization for mm. three sessions so again it was really important to make sure that everybody was yeah. was able to, to to participate and to talk um yeah. so it's helpful to get that background information and that one-to-ones I appreciate that's not always possible but again yeah. I've worked with teams where there's been 10 12 people yeah um, and of course that's much much harder absolutely but that's a really good point about inclusivity isn't it because mm. even in a big group um you can actually bring everybody with you by considering their different mm. learning styles and how they like to digest information and maybe give people choices and different options because often we design sessions where everybody goes through the same experience but we don't necessarily have to we could also get people different experiences but even if we design it in the same experience we also have to acknowledge and this is one of the things that supporters are really mindful of that the same experience feels different for everybody mm -hmm. Right. Anna, there's a comment in the chat as well about being uh, the supporter is noticing people who haven't contributed yeah. um, and also acknowledging that often there's many people in the room that need extra, just want more time to think. They're not all that natural extrovert who just blurts things out. So exactly. giving those people time. Exactly. Absolutely. Cool. Right. Very, very good. So let's go to the third one. Some voices in the room who chose... Who selected selecting and who would like to speak about that? Who sees themselves in the facilitation style of selecting? I'm going to change this. Hands up if you did selector. Who put, Hands up if you put selector up. Yeah. Am I? It's a few of you. Christine. Would one of you share? Christine, would you share just what that meant for you when you noticed it? Uh, so I think it was the efficiency side of that for me so um I probably got a rather bizarre combination of uh stimulating and selecting mm -hmm. the two that I picked mm -hmm. so um some of them felt a little bit contradictory but at the same time I could see myself in both of those so mm -hmm. yeah um the selecting was a, a sort of a, a a ruthless efficiency to get to the the end mm -hmm. result and mm -hmm. I think that kind of comes across definitely in have a very clear objective for the session uh i don't like to wander down too many paths i always try and bring people back and get to the objective as quickly as possible um very conscious that people these days as you say want to get stuff done in two hours not two days mm -hmm. uh, and I, I i'm often challenged to right can we do this sort of like in an hour and a half and you know yeah. it's a yeah so yeah i think yeah. again i tend to work quite fast at pace and perhaps yeah. sometimes shut things down too quickly to kind of get people back on track. Yeah, but you also chose stimulating, which is the opening up. So of course, in classic creativity terms, this is divergent and this is convergent, right? Um, um, but I think what's interesting is that you might say, oh, it's a bit confusing, but it's not confusing to you. You're not schizophrenic. Um, it's a little bit like driving a car. You know, these, you know, both of these are valid, but obviously we can't speed up and touch the brake at the same time. So the only watch out is obviously, you know, there's a moment for stimulating and there's a moment for selecting because otherwise it does become conflicting. And it sounds to me that, you know, you know when you have to, you know, go divergent and when you have to go convergent. So it's not confusing for you, which makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Great. Cool. <laughs> Love it. So we have sculpting as well. So this is about 
the sort of more structured logical journey etc cetera, etc cetera. and then we're going to go into breakout in a minute anybody chose this one hands up and wants to put a voice in the room ruth do you want to say something about how that shows up for you sure yeah i guess i guess i'm i don't know whether it's a little bit of spotting like i do follow the energy mm -hmm. but i'm really keen that we get somewhere and we get everyone on the same page at the end so it's not too like aimless it's got some it really needs bringing together as well. So I feel like maybe more sculpting. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and what does that look like for you when you design versus deliver? Do you have some thoughts on that? Well, sometimes I'll produce something and then I'll just feel like the journey is there's conflicting energies or something is maybe too deep, too quick. Or so I guess, I yeah, I guess the process needs to, or the energy or even in the moment I might be like oh the energy's got kind of low let's bring it up so yeah um but yeah it, I guess I'm thinking about the group and their process flow through yeah. there and which also sounds a little bit like supporting because this is about the yeah, people that's my other one actually process, supporting right? <laughs> so you know I think you're bringing your your two sides into into the room here as well because this is this is more the focus is on the process and I think what's really interesting is that what we essentially do as facilitators is extremely complex, but how we do it has to be simple so that everybody can go with us. So this is where your sculpting side comes in, that you know how to break the elephant down into the component parts and then take people, build the elephant up little by little. And I think that's uh, that's certainly one of the ways that this shows up in facilitation, both in design and in delivery. So let's talk. Lastly, somebody chose spotting. I think was that the least one. I didn't. I didn't uh, remember. I'll have a look. Richard, Bella, and somebody else who wants to talk uh, about Cheryl as well. Cheryl, Cheryl got in there first, I think. This is uh, more like the perceptive. Like maybe you don't. You're not the one that stands and talks a lot <laughs> all the time. Well, Cheryl. Cheryl came in first, I think. So. Cheryl. Hi. Hi. Uh, yeah, for me, I would say when I'm in the room, it's often what's not said. I think I've got that in the, the notes as well. So what isn't said in the room, and I'll often call that out. Um, my curiosity can definitely take me down a bit of a rabbit hole if I'm sensing something and I feel it it adds to the point. Um, but I know I have to be really aware of that because it may not always serve the room. Mm -hmm. um, and definitely sort of knowing where the energy is. So if I feel like it's dipped, I'm quite happy to call a break, you know, and say, right, we obviously all need to move around. We all need to get up, yeah. um, even if that's not in the plan. And I'll find a way of kind of yeah. pulling back or doing yeah. something further down the, the road. Because I know that's important for the kind of for the individuals. But it's it's kind of that whole that feeling and that vibe and, you know, the elephant in the room sometimes. Yeah. But that's really nice, actually. You talk you talk about sensing. You're sensing something, and then you follow it. And I think one thing to check often is like, okay, I'm sensing this. What do you guys feel? Like, are we? Am I kind of going off piece unnecessarily, or should we just follow it for a while? So just to check in with others. And this again is obviously you showing, you know, the combination of of supporting. And this is the energy, right? But also, hey, what well, you know? There's a conversation here. I'm sensing that could be interesting yeah. to explore. What does everybody else yeah. feel, right? Are we And also to yeah. give people a choice. If we go down here, we are missing this. Are we okay with that? Yeah. yeah. Uh, real yeah. quick, I want to send you in to break up, but Richard, maybe we hear from you real quick. Yeah, maybe it's my supporter and spotter, but I also like, when I'm designing, I like to create um, an environment and activities for people to get in touch with their own inner spotter, because for me, nothing new comes from what we already know. Yeah, so tapping in, feel, helping people feel safe to go into unknown spaces. And yes, explore. absolutely. That's lovely. That's exactly. That's beautifully summed up. Actually, these two support the uh, supporting uh, and and, uh, and spotting, because you know, old ways don't open new doors, right? And this is also where we need to take people into a place where they wouldn't have gone without us. Our role as facilitators is to take them to a better place in a better way, because otherwise they could have done it themselves and they wouldn't have had to spend the time and the money on us. Good, beautiful. Any comments on that? Anything we want to pull out on from the chat, uh, Kirsty, before we send them into breakout? Nope, we're going to send people to breakouts. So we need to tell you what the breakout is. 
you're going to be in pairs and obviously you've each i've forced each of you to choose two of these which is a bit unfair because you are a mix of all of them right but for the purpose of this you have chosen two um and don't worry if you can't remember the names you know it's the it's the it's the feeling of them the intent of them and we have <clears throat> you're going to go into pairs and we would like you to discuss i'm just referring to my notes here um how do um no what do you do when you either design or deliver um that gives you a way that this is your preferred style so what do you do that gives this a way for you so what are some of the things that you consistently do that gives it a way that you either have a preference for stimulating spotting sculpting and so on so what do you do and the second question is how does this style help you stand out from the facilitation crowd so we are a good amount of people on this call. How does this help you stand out from the facilitation crowd? And you might not have thought about this, but uh, it will be interesting to discuss for sure. And I think, Kirsty, you popped these questions in the chat as well, haven't you? I will do. Just yeah. replying to people who are getting stuck. Some people are getting chucked out. Interesting. As soon as we said we were going to do breakout rooms, lots of people left. <laughs> mm. I wonder what that's all about. Uh... But that's the best part. Well, I think it's the best part, but yeah. that's that's you and I, my love. Um, interesting. I'm going to send people to breakout rooms. Some of you are in singles. I'm going to sort that out, and then you're just going to get shuffled around. So don't be surprised if you go in and then you get pulled into another room. So I'm just going to start it. Otherwise, we will not get talking. Exactly. And don't worry if you arrive late. The other person you're going to talk to, it will bring you up to speed. It's the best way to do it. So invitations are on the screen right now. I'm going to move people around as well. All right. Enjoy out there and see you back here. <laughs> wow. So many people left. <laughs> okay, team, you're back. Uh, just We'd just love to hear. Quickly, Kirsty. Stu. Uh I know why some people have left because I nearly had to bail out because there was so much noise going on in the building I'm in. Oh, I thought I can't, I can't do a breakout. And just luckily, I made a few hand signals. Lots of people left, and suddenly I was able to do it. But I, but for a moment, I was thinking, oh, blimey, can I do this? You know, I didn't want to ruin the the discussion with somebody because of noise in the Aww. background. So it's possible. You sometimes can't hear. Zoom cuts out a lot of noise now. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. So should we hear some people's noticings? What? What was coming up when you were having a conversation with your new 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 Zoom friend who wants to who's not spoken today? Who fancies sharing? I'd like to say something, Kirsty. Yes, please. Thanks, Sarah. Um, so I had a lovely conversation with Sandrine, and uh, what I was noticing is that there's quite a distinction between preferences between design and delivery. And you can't really ignore the context that the client gives you. Mm -hmm. uh, so one of the things that Sandrine and I were talking about, and it, it also showed our differences, is um, the check-in with the people you're going to facilitate beforehand. Some some organisations just won't put that in, within the budget. Mm. Others will. Um, and our differences of style of whether we would do it, even if it wasn't paid for or not, was was really fascinating. Mm. Yeah, um, but definitely the um, I'd like to think that the stimulation that I do when I'm creating isn't uh, experienced as chaos when it comes to the delivery. I think I'm I'm more of the the sculpting. Hope I hope. Um, yeah. It's it's really useful lens to look at this through. So thank you, Hannah, and thank you, Sandrine. You're welcome. But Sarah, you make, you're making a really, really good point, isn't it? Because effectively, what we do as facilitators from end from start to finish is a creative journey. Mm. Because we get a brief from a client. Hopefully, we get to speak to the client. We get to ask questions and understand the context. And when we ask questions. We, we ask questions to understand their, their context, their goals, their resources, their capabilities, but we also try to understand who will we have in the room. So we, we ask these questions in usually selecting and spotting mode. And then we need to go away and start 
sculpting and shaping things up and we might do it in our preference around stimulating lots and lots of ideas we might do it more as a logical journey we might do it as both right and then when we when we start going in and of course we take into consideration the context ten, context in terms of people but then when we start delivering we might go into different modes as well so you effectively have all the different facilitation styles in play throughout the journey so that's beautiful beautiful uh, observation there who else who's actually here's a here's the thing so um can i make a hypothesis that i reckon many of us on on here have used a psychometric test in the past insights discovery disc mbti even just out of curiosity found a freebie on the website on our website who has ever like really paused and gone, oh, if I view, if I look at my MBTI profile or my insights profile, how does that relate to my training, my facilitation, my coaching style? Has anyone ever paused and yeah. had that little inner chat with self? Jason. Jason, hello. Hello. Um, yeah, I've tried lots of different psychometric tests. And ironically, they all say the same thing about me, which is good. What, what's that by any chance? Uh, I'm quite outgoing. And it feels like I like to be up in front of people, with people, and very have that social element of me. Uh, and in the past, some parts of the careers didn't quite fit. It was a round peg in a square, uh, round hole. Uh, uh, I got that wrong completely. I'm tired today. But square peg in a round hole. But I, I feel that I'm sitting in the right place now for my creative brain, I, I very much think on my feet when I'm doing a workshop as an example. And I like like to push a lot of energy and build a lot of rapport and trust and connections with people. But I like to get their buy-in initially. Without that buy-in, uh, I've lost them completely. So I, I like to get that initial connection and then I can take them onto a journey. That's that's the how I think and feel. But yeah assessments and all that have said similar sorts of things about me mm. cool Absolutely. but i think um, what we have to remember is these assessments they are a lens to look at the world yeah. it's not the truth necessarily right <laughs> but it's a new lens for you to consider yourself and others and then you know it's a language that you can use to be more mindful of what it is you're doing uh, and that that's where it's a tool and a lot of psychometric tools we use them oh that's really interesting about me but the so what so what do we do mm -hmm. with that but I that's the truth with all psychometric tests you've got a a good practitioner just like you're doing is applying the so what because yeah. otherwise it's just a it's a very fun day and many of us have delivered those can see the energy in the room but like you're doing here what does that mean for me in this space as a facilitator how I design and how I deliver um, just as we're coming up to the hour, I'm always conscious um, people do leave. I have dropped a couple of times the download into the chat for you. Um, as ever, I'm going to host an after party because, as we know, the best parties happen at the mm. end of the party. Um, so if you want to stay on and have a chat uh, with me, I think Hannah might be staying. I don't know. Yes, I've made that I, assumption. And I also wanted just to say before we, we close is that today we looked at this, uh, the five styles through the lens of facilitation. If you're interested, then we will host a session. This is not Kirsty's session, but it's a tea, the host the session that I'm doing with my team where we will look at the through leadership. And the date for that is the 5th of September where we look at the five styles in the context of leadership. So if you would like to be invited to that, just drop your name or email in the chat. Um, and then also we certify people in the psychometric tool. And we have a conversation about that on the 12th of September. You will notice that these dates are after the summer because we're going on summer holiday. So if you want to be invited either to the leadership session on the 5th of September and or to the certification session on the 12th, then let just drop your email in the in the chat and we'll be make sure you get invited. 
Nice. So can we just give Hannah a really big thank you, uh, sign of appreciation, however you'd like to do that. It's so nice to be here. I was excited. I'm really pleased um, we've done this. And and maybe uh, Hannah and I will probably have a chat about this. So one of the things I'm really thinking about with SOF is how we bring more value to the community and what else we can be doing. So part of me is wondering whether we put on more events and more classes for people so you can come and do some more of your own personal development and learning. So maybe we will get something around this uh, up and available in the future. But thank you, Hannah. I really, really appreciate it. It was good to see everyone. We are having a break in August for the SOF pods. Everyone needs a pause, uh, mm -hmm. especially in the Northern Hemisphere. I'd love to say we're going to enjoy some summer. I'm looking <laughs> out the window, it's pouring with rain. Um, the next pod will be in September, um, Friday the 5th, I believe. Um, so we'll be back together then. Um, I haven't chosen the theme yet. There might be a possibility that I'd love someone else to host because I might be away with work in Manila and the time zone is just not going to work full stop. Um, so if you have a an energy that you fancy being one of the hosts drop me a text drop me a message um you can recommend so it it's fun Kirsty's great to work with she was a great sculptor for me thank you <laughs> there's a definite way there's a definite vibe so yeah it's the 6th of september six oh thank you six right. six <laughs> thank you anyway if you want to stay for the after party stay for the after party Otherwise, go well. Have an amazing weekend, everybody. Uh, I hope you get some rest, some R&R, &R, and thank you for being here.